When I go see my patients in the pre-op area, most of them have really routine questions for me. But a certain percentage of my patients have a very specific fear. They say to me, "Doc, after you put me out." Is there any chance that I'm going to wake up during surgery and feel that surgeon cutting into me? Some of them say, "Doc, after the surgery's over, is there a chance I'm never going to wake up again?" What these people seem to realize in their gut is that as their anesthesiologist, I am actually going to manipulate their consciousness. The major target of our anesthetic drugs is your brain, making modern surgery possible, making you blissfully unaware of the surgeon's knife. Anesthetic drugs actually bind to receptors in your brain, and in doing that, they actually dissolve your conscious awareness. When surgery is over, we turn off the anesthetic, we wash all that drug out of your brain, and we watch your consciousness reassemble itself. So I decided, why not watch this in the operating room? So I decided to measure and observe my brain, my patients' brains as they moved through losing and regaining consciousness. And the way in which I did that was by putting an electrode array on their forehead. And this enabled me to actually watch them moving from being completely awake to being completely unaware of all those noxious and terrifying stimuli that come in from the external world. Now, watching brains dissolve and reassemble themselves actually has given us some really interesting insights into what distinguishes conscious from unconscious brains. But bear with me here; none of this answers the really important question: Where does consciousness come from? Is consciousness actually produced by all those complex neural circuits that we call the brain? And here's the corollary question. If I were to build a high-fidelity simulation of the brain, every nerve cell, every network—and believe me, there are people around the world trying to do this—would that artificial construct become conscious? Many modern neuroscientists believe this is true, but I'm going to introduce you tonight to this heretical idea. What if consciousness were not produced by the brain at all? What if consciousness were this thing outside, within the universe, this kind of information that the brain could access, filter, and process in order to enable our survival? So we're going to use the visual system as an analogy. We don't perceive most of the electromagnetic spectrum. In fact, our vision as humans is limited by the three color receptors in our eyes, and what that does is it produces the rainbow that we know. Roy G. Biv, but there are actually animals out there like this cute fellow who lives on the coral reef, a mantis shrimp. This guy has 12 or more photoreceptors to our three, and what that means for this shrimp is that he pulls in a lot more detail from the electromagnetic spectrum, all the way from the deep red into the ultraviolet, meaning that the shrimp's rainbow is much wider than the human being's rainbow. And on top of that. Once visual information enters the human eye, it starts to get processed in the retina. It gets processed in the cortex. By the time it actually arrives, even at the visual cortex, most of the data that was available in the natural world has been thrown out. So what the brain is doing? It, the brain processes information, but it doesn't produce it. Right? That information, that visual spectrum, is a property of the natural universe. So I got to ask you: Why is it that we think that the brain must produce consciousness? So here's another way of looking at it: There is an enormous amount of information in the universe. Physicist Seth Lloyd estimated there might be 10 to the 90th bits in the universe by comparing our universe to an enormous quantum computer. Now, whether his estimate is correct or not is not as important as the fact that this number is incorrigibly large. We couldn't build a brain. We couldn't connect a brain to a universe with 10 to the 90th bits. It would burn out. It's too metabolically expensive. But we could conceive of a limited set of circuits that could bind to a more limited part of the universe, pull in this information, filter and process it, and produce something like the electrical signature that we currently observe and measure, like an EEG.
sounds a lot like the visual system, but at a much grander scale. So I introduce you again to that heretical question. Let's go back there, and let's use anesthesia as another analogy. When I deliver anesthetic drugs in clinically relevant doses, I don't abolish the electrical activity in your brain. Yes, I do make you reversibly comatose, but I don't completely wipe out your brain. In fact, what I do is some of those oscillations in your brain become more synchronized. Your brain actually has less ability to calculate information than it did before, and it becomes functionally disconnected. Parts of the brain, some of the networks, they begin to break apart. They essentially dissolve. Anesthetic drugs basically change the brain as a filter. Now, if anesthetic drugs are doing that, do they actually reveal something fundamental about consciousness? And can we now start to ask some really hard questions? You remember that original question I, I brought up? Could we actually build an artificial construct that became conscious? Well, maybe the right question to ask is, can we actually create a set of circuits that is complicated, that's complex enough that it finally has access to all that information in the universe? And what about the even harder question? How many of you have ever wondered, what happens when an organism dies? Where does its consciousness go? Does it die with it? Well, if consciousness is just information or an information trace, perhaps it persists in the universe in much the same way that the visual spectrum outlasts the person who is having a visual perception. And if that's true, can you take consciousness and move it from brain to brain, from brain to a computer, from avatar to avatar? Can you actually copy and share consciousness as if it were data. When I anesthetize my patients, they wonder where their consciousness goes. I would like to ask, is it possible that I actually reordered their brains filtered, actually took some of the filter out of the way to give it more access to information? What if, when you're anesthetized, you go somewhere else, you actually have access to more information, and when you come back, you just don't explicitly Recall it. Our perception of color begins in the world, and it ends in our mind. Consciousness might also begin in the world and end in our mind. And what makes human consciousness appear to be so special is that the way it ends in the mind of a human is different than the way it ends in the mind of a mantis shrimp. Thank you. Woo. Thank you.